What hobby does not get more expensive the more you dive into it? Smithing. It's always just as expensive. And nothing beats the feeling you get when you finish your first knife and cut something with it. I mean, I have a buddy who hits up abandoned rail yard for the iron spikes, and melts those down. He also hits up a nearby salvage yard for the metal scrap they don't want. He always has plenty of iron, tin, and nickel on hand. It only gets expensive for him when he wants to make low-grade steel or bronze. And he only does those when someone asks, and they front the cost, unless he's making someone a gift. Magnet Fishing All you need is a strong magnet and some rope really and maybe a few other things like gloves. Might even find something valuable one day if you're exceedingly lucky. I pulled a gun out of a local river. Explaining magnet fishing to a cop you called on yourself is an interesting conversation. Today I learned of a new hobby. Sounds fun. Collecting rocks that you find. Plus it keeps decorating costs down. Who needs some fancy knick-knack to fill up a nook when I've got a large chunk of conglomerate or pegmatite will do. Yes. Rock collecting. My dad, 75, me, 52, and now my grandson, 5, are all obsessed with collecting various types of rocks and figuring out the composition. Dad just recently bought a rock tumbler so we can polish up some of the nicer rocks and he built a rock garden for my grandson at his house. I've made several decorative rock gardens and dry river beds. Love it, love it, love it. Writing, all you need is a word document and your brain. Unless you're like me, who prefers Earl writing, and now has a dragon's hoard of journals to write in. I hoard a bunch of empty notebooks. I'm so scared to write in those pretty empty pages and mess up. Lock picking. That actually makes more money if you're fast enough. I don't know. Slash you slash lock picking lawyer seems to have some crazy stuff that doesn't look too cheap. Geocaching? So easy. All you need is a few small trinkets and a geocaching resource. When I was a kid my family loved to geocache and eventually we set one up near our house. An office worker wrote us a long ballad about how excited he was to see a new cache and how he rushed out, found and signed it, and made it back in less than an hour just in time for his meeting. It was so sweet and memorable, geocaching is such a great hobby less than three. Extreme Couponing Mom? Note, if you're going to do this, please don't be a dick to the cashiers. We know you spent hours figuring out how to buy $50 of stuff for $1. 63. But it's not our fault when our coupon machine doesn't work, the online coupons don't go through, or you're 80 cents short of the total needed for that $10 off online coupon you were banking on. Please don't get angry at us. We're happy that you're saving so much, but when things go wrong there's not much the non-manager staff can do. Also, don't break up your one purchase into 10 purchases when there is a line in the store. Either wait until there is no line, or being willing to step aside until the line goes down. People don't want to wait in line for 20 minutes while you finesse your purchases. I had one lady who got through three broken up purchases, noticed a line, and then stepped aside and let two people in line go before finishing her last five purchases in her purchase chain. I swear I wanted to hug that lady. Please don't be rude or a dick, just because your couponing plan didn't work flawlessly. We will root for you and help you with couponing so long as you're polite, pleasant and don't hold up our line. Wild crafting. That's pretty much the entire point. Note, wild crafting should be practiced mindfully, with sustainability in mind. Take only what you need, leave enough for the plants and animals to live well and reproduce. Abundance is there, but only if we don't harm it. Well now I need to know more. This is my favorite answer in the thread. I have Google and time and interest and also a very not necessary but nice hipster hoary hoary I bought for $30. I've definitely harvested more than $30 worth of wild lavender alone. Oddly enough, lace making. 
Depending on the style of lace you're doing, the initial cost of tools can be fairly steep, or super cheap, some styles require a needle. Just a needle. But once you've got the equipment, you're only ever required to buy thread and maybe pins or paper. Ok, pattern books, but if you're even a little bit creative, you've got that covered. Source, used to make lace. Over the course of 15 years, I spent maybe $200. Not $200 a year, $200 spread over 15 years. And most of that was because I wanted specialty threads, like hand spun linen, etc. Initially read this as lance making and am now in a wiki hole looking at medieval weaponry. I have nothing really to comment, just thought you should know one of the incredibly weird side effects of your reply. And if you let some historical reenactment groups know you actually enjoy making lace, you can make a fair bit of money off of it. Handmade, historically accurate lace is quite pricey, and 99.9% .9 of that cost is in labor. Cross stitch slash embroidery, it's fairly cheap in general but once you have a few sets in, you have a wide variety of colors to do your own. Eater, whoa, thanks for the silver. My first came here to say this. You can make embroidery expensive if you want, but if you don't it can be super cheap forever. I mean DMC floss is what, 75 cents per skein? Cross stitch slash embroidery, it's fairly cheap in general but once you have a few sets in, you have a wide variety of colors to do your own. If you think you've got the passion, then embroider, fix and fashion, for there's really nothing finer than a needlepoint designer. Take a moment, take a minute, take a spool of thread and spin it. Take a work of art to relish. Make a pattern to embellish. See I say it in confession that it's simply my obsession, for there's something pretty bitch in about an afternoon of stitching. Playing cards. As long as those aren't magic, the gathering cards. If you play your cards right. Writing. It may even happen that by diving into it you could earn something. Writing it takes a certain amount of conscious effort to keep prices down though. Knowing that you don't need a fancy computer to run a word processor. You do not need a Mac when a Chromebook or lower end PC will suffice. Nowadays, a Bluetooth keyboard for your smartphone will also work. Knowing that Google Docs and OpenOffice are free, and that you don't need to shell out money for MS Word or Scrivener. Knowing that you do not need to pay for illustrations unless you're ready to sell to a publisher. Knowing the difference between actual publishing and vanity publishing. Knowing that you need neither the best keyboard nor the best chair to write. Not spending money on writing related chat keys. Knowing that you do not need to pay for feedback. The internet will gladly give it for free. Realizing that if your story is compelling enough, you don't actually need coffee. So I wrote a book. As it happens, I have a built-in audience, if you know what that book is about, you generally want it. But the other edge of that sword is that the built-in audience is fairly small. There is zero chance of the book breaking out and becoming Harry Potter. So sales have been reasonably steady, but never what I would call large. Here's where it gets interesting. On the day I released the book, I sold 9 copies. That day I was number one bestseller in automotive transportation and motorsport, and was 34,000 total sales rank. Since then, I sell one every couple of days, which pre-Covid had me in the 300,000 to 500,000 sales rank. Very rarely, when I had a bit of a dry spell, I drop below 1 million. There are 33 million books on Amazon. I make beer money on that book, and on a bad day I'm in the top 3% of sales. There are a lot of people not making money in books. Chess. Easy to learn, difficult to master. Resources to learn are freely available on the internet and it is gaining quite a bit of popularity on streaming websites over the last few months. Edit, if someone new or any beginner want to learn chess, I would love to teach, feel free to DM. Also if you are really interested, please head over to r slash chess. 
Smile Edit 2, my inbox is inundated with replies and it makes me really happy that a simple comment made so many people interested in chess. If you need any help, please include your chess. Come or Lee Chess. Or Guide or both, register if new, so that it will be easier to communicate. Edit 3, going to bed. We'll reply in a few hours. Keep up the chess hype everyone and also the cheese hype. Loads of people misreading the first word, lol. The Pog Champs tournament brought me back to chess. Hikaru Gaidas. Edit, since our slash anime is leaking, I'm talking about Hikaru Nakamura, an American chess prodigy who holds the title of Grandmaster and has spearheaded chess's massive surge in popularity on Twitch. Man I know people who spent thousands of dollars on chess as their hobby. Blew my mind. Mainly because of the recent world record achieved by the Hunger Games actor. Subscribe for more hot Reddit takes in your inbox, guaranteed.